Hi. Hi. Hey. How's it going? Hi. How's it going? Good. I, I can't remember if I'm supposed to set up my own microphone or if just using the computer is good enough. Oh, it's perfect. Thank you. It's, it's great. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Good. Right. Sorry, I spaced out, but good thing I was just already in front of my computer. Yeah, no worries. Uh, so I guess we're going to get right into questions. But first off, thanks for doing this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Took your songwriting course back last November. It was great. Cool. Uh, thanks. Definitely recommend that. I guess so. the first uh, question I have for you is, um, what do you think is the importance of constant creation in art? And not, not, I guess not only just for the sake of your art, but for how it might cause us to live. If that makes sense. Whoa. Starting huge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, the importance of constant creation for how to live. Is that Sorry, what you said? the, the, co like how, how constantly creating art changes the way we live. So I think you've talked about it a bit with, I guess the spirit worlds. I think you've mentioned something like that or, um, I don't know, just constantly trying to do something other than consume <laughs> art, I guess. Um, yeah. Well, it's a, it's a value of mine personally. I, I don't know if I would go as far as to like prescribe it for everyone as to say it's the most important thing, but maybe I would actually, I think, <laughs> I think that's a, I, I hesitate to be like, these are the rules. This is what's good. And this is what's bad for everyone. Cause everyone has their own values and that's uh, valid. But that one in, uh, I think it's important. I think it's part of being a well-rounded human being is to have some kind of creative pursuit and whatever form that takes and it's just like a thing that humans have done since we've been humans and we live in particularly like achievement-based capitalistic times that are about extracting worth and value from ourselves and from the world around us and from other human beings and that's it's bleak so having this thing like writing a song or do, whittling a stick or whatever it is that's not to make money it's to like access some other kind of meaning. I think that's really important because otherwise life is just like dead. Yeah. Life mm. is dead. <laughs> yeah. I think you've, you've made that distinction before between living as like going to your job and things you have to do versus um, existing in that mindful, like artistic space, I think. Mm. Um but yeah, I think you got you got really into that in the um the course too. I found that valuable. Oh good. Thank you. Yeah, and I definitely think that um creating constantly, I know like for, for many musicians or artists in general, like um like creating constantly is or making music at a constant rate, um definitely like it, it brings like people happiness. I know some people they focus on like if whether they're a musician, they'll put out release material like every four years or they'll they'll focus on like sort of the formulaic form of like recording than performing music. But some people definitely tend to focus on constant creation as a way of like keeping them out of like, you know, the, the boredoms of daily life and sort of like as an escape method. And uh, I definitely think that's like an important value for at least for many upcoming musicians that are you know trying to you know start making art uh, mm -hmm. yeah yeah i agree i think it's good for well i last night i watched this documentary or the first half of it i'm gonna finish it tonight um called cutie and the boxer which i've seen before but it's about this older couple these two artists that have just been living in kind of poverty for decades and they're just doing living the art life and it's not even about like if they have successful exhibitions or they sell a lot of pieces or whatever they're just like in it all the time and they're like they're just it's easy to romanticize that type of poverty it's also a struggle to be like devoted to this thing that's not necessarily to make money but yeah they it's a certain type of fulfillment that I think is very beautiful. Cool. Yeah.
Uh, well, I guess uh, switching gears here, um, we, we kind of started off with the big philosophical life questions. Uh, now we're moving into the more just um, technical questions, I guess. But uh, you've been noted to use some pretty weird equipment in your music. Um, I guess notably that 1940s wire recorder, which has always like fascinated me that those still like are still like functional and you can uh, record I've like decent quality music. I Oh, is up for the uh, for the 1940s wire recorder uh, compilation? Oh yeah, that guy. Yeah, there was there was a guy who had one of those who um, maybe I sang into it once. <laughs> I can't even remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Was... To be fair, it it was one song, so maybe just kind of like a flash in the pan moment. Uh, it was. Then, like... I don't remember when or where or what song it it was. But no, it's true. I've used um, older things over the years. Yeah, yeah. And I think, um, you know, it's it's really interesting to see because, like, I feel like you have, like, a decent collection of, like, like pretty much everything, like, like musically, equipment-wise or recording gear-wise. So I was kind of wondering um, what type of, uh, or more so, uh, what gear has kind of, like, sort of passed your hands uh, that has been notable or interesting to you at least or yeah it's a really small collection I'm not really a gearhead at all I actually am kind of anti um, I have a minimal collection of stuff it's here I'll just show you I'm like in my little studio space I have this eight track uh, reel to reel that I record on and then I have these like rack unit things and that's kind of a new development I've got like mm couple of preamps a compressor a distortion um a couple of eqs other mic preamps and then this is another reel to reel that is a two track that i use to mix down to so mix down to so i can make um just all analog albums instead of mixing down to the computer which i also do a lot hmm. other than that i mean i have like two guitar amps couple acoustic guitars, couple electric guitars, a bass, which are over there stacked up. Got the yeah. chord organ on the shelf there. And a couple of flutes from the thrift store or like little recorders. That's it. Um, I like, I like the feeling of figuring out how to make the sounds that I want to make with limited gear, not a ton of pedals or anything like that. Yeah, well, I guess a sort of limitation, uh, you know, fosters some at least like trying to innovate with what you have, I suppose. Um, yeah, and uh, like I, I definitely, I pretty much have the same sort of setup. Like I have like drums, bass, and guitar, and that's pretty much like all I need to oh, make yeah. music. I forgot about the drum set downstairs. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, has there any been uh, any like pieces of gear that I just kind of stuck with you? Uh, oh yeah over the your music career yeah i mean this guitar is my first guitar my first acoustic guitar it's um oh, wow. i've written like every song i've ever written on this guitar it's like cracked <laughs> it's got duct tape on it it's uh, i've glued it a bunch of times and it's it's really quiet it's like unsuitable for playing shows with but it just it's like so comfortable and worn down and it was five dollars and yeah it's like not a brand of any kind same with my electric guitar it's this it's my first guitar and i've had other guitars over the years but just returned to this first one it just i probably i could be a little less stubborn about it and get nicer things and maybe the sound quality would improve a little bit but it, that to me seems like a distraction from the point of this project, which is like making a thing that feels impactful mm -hmm. rather and I was, than like perfect. I, I think that's interesting. It kind of ties into the next question. Your art feels very like alive and it, it's like a living and breathing thing when I, when I listen to a lot of it. Um, Thank you. I guess maybe, maybe this comes from having to figure things out, but do you have any advice for getting that? that sort of very organic, alive. Um... Well, that's a really nice compliment. I, 
I it's what I want it to feel like, but I don't I don't know how it happens actually. I mean, I think treating the songs lightly is important, not being too like sacred about this perfect version or getting it like once I perfect it, then it must always be this way. And like, if I get a band together to play it, we have to practice and get it super tight because it goes like this no matter what. I think letting the, letting it all be like permeable and and being willing to change the form and break it, that's what makes things feel alive. Because yeah, nothing is permanent. Yeah, I think when it comes to creating art, I feel like a lot of musicians or artists, they have trouble um, putting it out there or at least publishing their work. Um, I think it's a lot of like, what are people going to think? Or even is this going to sell as a product? And um, or people just may not feel that their art like fits in the picture of like whatever audience they're trying to gather. Um, so what do you think is stopping people from like creating or putting out work? uh or how do we how can we tell if what we made is good <laughs> yeah that's a tough one i mean it requires a lot of blind confidence or or like so or, or denial <laughs> or something mm -hmm. to put something out for me at least i i just try try not to think about how it's going to be received i mean that's the only way i can do it it's the only way i can put out anything even after receiving compliments and like from strangers where people are like that thing you made is really good it's still like there's still a, a, vo a self voice that's like mm -hmm. well they're wrong it's not good um <laughs> and it's not like uh, you know i still am going to keep doing the stuff but the only way i can keep doing it is by sort of pretending that it's just for me and that there's no mm -hmm. one out there listening um that doesn't seem like a very healthy answer but <laughs> because it would be cool if we could all just like own it and be like yeah this thing i made i stand by it and actually i do kind of feel that way i do stand by the stuff i made and i like playing show and being like yeah that's my thing i made and if you like it cool if you don't that's fine too but um yeah it's good to just accept yourself i guess is what it comes down to and the question of like, if it's going to make money or get fans, that's a whole other question that's um, mm -hmm. uh, bottomless. Yeah, I, I totally feel like a lot um, of people within the music scene are more focused on the numbers aspect, especially with the social media age and like streaming becoming more of a part. I feel um, like some artists are more concerned with like, like, will this get streams? without like really serving themselves first or wondering why they're making art in the first place yeah um, i think that's I just think that... we, the age we're living in is we, like for decades now we've sort of our minds have been converted to brands oh, um and that's just like in all aspects of life and in, in, uh, everyone everyone who isn't living in a cave somewhere who we're all like marketing ourselves and looking at the stats of like likes and followers and stuff and so everyone is hustling to get like life is a pr campaign now it's bleak <laughs> we're all brands so it's hard for people not to think of their art project in those same terms whether or not it's i mean the money thing is like even really successful musicians are just getting little fractions of pennies from the streaming accounts that from the streaming platforms because that business model is so messed up but it's not even about that for a lot of people a lot of people are just trying to get attention because we live in an attention economy now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it's on spotify and soundcloud and all those apps taking advantage of musicians um and now recently even Bandcamp getting uh picked up by a company yeah it's a bummer um hope something comes up uh, something probably will uh hope, hope so. so i don't know not necessarily <laughs> um anyways i guess into our next question um do you agree with sharing the intention of your art with its observers so if, mm -hmm. if if I write a poem and my friend asks me, hey, like, what was that about? Mm -hmm. Should I tell them what I understand or, or let them come to their own conclusions about it? 
Yeah. I don't know. I think my opinion about that shifts from time back and and forth. I don't think I've made up my mind. I think it's really cool when artists are like, no, I'm not going to talk about it. Yeah. Um, my my favorite quote about that, I think, is Robert Frost, the poet, read a poem, and then somebody asked the, him to explain what it meant. And he said, oh, you mean you want me to say it worse? <laughs> I mean, which means like the poem yeah. is the explanation of its own self. Like to explain it, it would be to say the same thing in worse language, in like less elegant and less elegant form. So that's cool, but whatever. It's not the biggest crime to have to elaborate on yourself. I, I also think there are things that can't be expressed in language or like themes that um, you can't just like tell someone and they understand, but you might be able to through a string of words, even if the words don't mean anything together, it might paint a picture in someone's head of what something means. And I think that's mm -hmm. is very interesting in itself. And that's kind of why I've refused to tell people what things are about, because mm -hmm. I don't want I don't want to shatter anything that had formed in their mind from their own experiences. Totally. Yeah. There's like a purity to that that subjectivity. Mm -hmm. And I guess with I guess I'm not against discussions of art, but there's platforms like Genius that have come out where people will mm -hmm. say like, this line is about this. Yeah. Or as opposed to, you know, to a typical discussion. And I think that has been harmful for a lot of um, more abstract pieces. Mm. Yeah, I know. There's like a, it's a human uh, craving to like clarify the abstract. It's It's uncomfortable for all of us, I think, to just like, let let ourselves not know a thing it's mm -hmm. it's like a disc it's a beautiful and it's also uncomfortable to hang out in that ambiguity i agree yeah um i guess those are those are kind of the uh the main questions we had but i have a few more that i just i've been wondering about um so actually actually this one's this one's kind of important uh so the club we are affiliated with as a at a local university and we're trying to get as many people playing music as we can um and i know when you were in the night like in the 90s when you're making this music with your friends it basically sounds like you're running around like wild young like making art um mm -hmm. do you believe that kind of environment is still something we can foster today or you think people are, are too either i don't know too scared to share or i'm not sure but yeah, I don't know. I feel like I should ask you that because you're you're like in the trenches trying to make it happen. I'm um I'm not in a community of peers that we're trying to like form bands and stuff as much. I mean, I do have some friends and we play music, but uh I resist the temptation to say like no, everyone's on their phones too much. We're fucked. <laughs> like I I do think that it's like people want to get off their phones actually it's like unfulfilling people are full of anxiety and depression from it so the thirst has got to be there and certainly yeah i believe that it's possible cool mm -hmm. and kind of with that there's also the um the separation of artists from normal people i i guess there's kind of like the you s see the artist like standing on a big mountain and that's mm -hmm. changed a lot over the past couple of years too um, mm -hmm. Like we used to have big artists who would come and play in like our gym, like Frank Zappa played in our gymnasium, Crazy. some some other, some other big artists. People we, threw we, we, tomatoes at Tom Waits. Yeah. Uh, people threw tomatoes at Tom Waits. Where are you guys? Where's your university? Uh, university of Waterloo in Ontario. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, Tom, Tom Waits played, uh, Led Zeppelin played nearby too. Mm -hmm. So just stuff I like played that. there before. Not at the university, but, um. Oh wait, maybe I'm thinking of Guelph. Uh, Jane Bond is that a place? Oh yeah, that's on Princess Street. Yeah, I played yeah, yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, that feels like a very Phil Elverum type place. Yeah. Uh, there was also one of my friends told me you might have played in the, like a shed in my neighborhood like 30 years ago or something like that. Yeah, it's possible. But, uh, but uh, that's interesting. Um, but yeah, J Jane Bond is is right here. That's cool. Didn't know that. Um, there's a uh, another show. I I read the review for for Blood on Pitchfork and they talk about you uh you called it the paper opera which was oh, yeah. just like 
I saw a video of it too, and you're like running around with like a wolf's head on, yeah, uh, just wild. Like I, I said, like wild and and unique. That was a particularly wild tour. Mm -hmm. Sounds like it. I was wondering if you remember anything more from that. Yeah. Uh, every every day was different. We kind of gave ourselves the job to make every to like make a whole show every day. So we would show up at like noon. We would get there really early rather than showing up at the venue at 6 p.m. or whatever. We would just get there as early as we could and transform the space. And the back of the van was full of like all kinds of crazy supplies, rolls of paper and ink and tarps and rope and like a kettle drum and this wolf's head mask. And uh, yeah, we just set up like some nights the show would just be like a a call in or um like a TV set with like a it wasn't even music really. There would be songs. It'd be like a a variety show, and I would do skits and build a fort and steal things from the audience and take them to my fort and yeah, every day was different. That's really really interesting. It's it sounds like it's like one of the most interesting, unique, like creative waterfalls I uh, I think I've ever heard of. It was really good. Um, but yeah, that was that was kind of what what I wanted to ask about okay uh, thank you so much for doing this yeah, is, nice is there, yeah thanks for your time yeah is there yeah, is there any um thing to look forward to i know you just had a bunch of shows you announced but yeah any projects or anything you're excited to, to talk about not quite yet i've got things in the works that i don't quite know what they're going to be yet but yeah i'm working on stuff awesome mm. well, i look forward to hearing it yeah thanks yeah. thank you so much Talk to you later. Thank Bye. You. See ya. Bye.